Good morning. I'm going to start in about one to two minutes. I still see people are continuing to join. For people that's still joining, we're going to start about 10.03. I still um, see people joining and to allow people to get settled. For the people that's joining, good morning. I'm giving time. I'm giving people time to get settled. We're going to start the presentation about three minutes after ten, so ten o three. All right, it looks like everyone is settled. I don't want to take too much of your time this morning, but I did want to take some time and chat with you guys. Um, first, I want to start off by stating that we are hosting three sessions with the same content, the first being today and the last on December 9th, because we want to make sure that all attendees across all sessions are privy to our Q&A. We are asking that you submit your questions either in the chat box or you can send a question to the compliance inbox. That is compliance at dca.ga.gov and we're going to publish our responses after the last session on our website on December 9th. Second, I would like to thank everyone for your attendance today and to really thank you for the work that you do to maintain um, thriving communities for our diverse residents throughout the state of Georgia. I hope everyone entered the holiday season safe and free from COVID and just really being mentally okay. I think this year could be summed up as a um, tornado and hurricane mixed together, but we are grateful that we are able to continue business as usual, as much as possible during um, a pandemic for the greater good, so thank you. I always like to include an org chart for you guys to see current staff and team roles. We welcome new staff in the last couple of weeks and months and also had a couple of staff leave or transition to other roles at DCA. So this meeting um, actually serves multiple purposes. First and foremost and most importantly, it allows us to engage with you guys and to communicate new policy um, and important changes happening within OPM. And for those that aren't really familiar with our acronyms, OPM is short for Office of Portfolio Management. Um, and two, it allows us to identify management companies in our portfolio that have little to no engagement with us. And we know that because we look at the analytics of our newsletter and we know that there's a substantial 
amount of people that are subscribed. They're just not open it and reading it. So in the next upcoming weeks, we want to make sure that everyone is aware that we will be announcing important steps for software onboarding. And we just want to make sure that you guys have this on your radar by expecting forthcoming announcements and not just with our software change, but with other policy and changes coming down the pipeline. I want to stress that our main vehicle for communication is and will continue to be the newsletter. Software, it's coming. Hopefully everyone knows that. And if you did not know, you know now. <laughs> yes, we are transitioning to Emphasis Software. Hopefully everyone read the latest Midas announcement that December 10th is the last date you will be able to use Midas. So please make sure your tenant data is uploaded prior to December 10th. What can you expect after December 10th? Here's the game plan so far. We will announce mandatory software training dates for all management companies. And of course, training will be staggered for, your, for our partners over the course of a few months. You will receive notification of your training date and the expectation is that the appropriate staff will attend training. After training, you will then be able to resume your data uploads. So now is the perfect time to update any compliance contacts if necessary so that we can make sure that the appropriate staff is notified. You can do that by making sure that they're also subscribed to the BLAST because we do not want you to miss your training date. And we're really excited and pleased. And we think that you will be too about the new software and its compatibility with other software that you may currently use in addition to um, features intended to lessen some of the administrative burdens of compliance monitoring that I know internally we can appreciate and value and you so will and you will too. Let's talk a little bit about our proposed management company approval policy. Thank you to everyone who provided feedback during our comment period. Um, our comment period is now closed and given the feedback, we are revisiting um, the fair housing verbiage and we are consulting with our attorneys. This is this verbiage right here. The intent behind this verbiage was not to penalize management companies or not approve management companies that had unsubstantiated um, discriminated, discrimination charges filed against them. So we are consulting with our attorneys to make sure that verbiage is acceptable. Um, the final verbiage will be, will be published in our BLAST within the next coming weeks. So please um, take the time if you have not already to make sure that you have reviewed this policy. Um, just really quick, um, Section 1 details the qualification requirements. Section 2 talks about if you are new to DCA and you would like to manage properties in our portfolio, it gives guidance on the requirements and the forms that you would need to complete. Section three of the policy talks about if you're already in our portfolio, you don't have to do as much as the new properties coming into the portfolio, but there are some reporting forms and um, changes, the um, documents that we will still request, even if you're already in the portfolio. Talks about multiple property requests where DCA does reserve the right to limit the number of properties that a management company um, may receive approval to manage. Your fees and of course non-compliance penalties. And section seven kind of gives scope to their approval levels. Um, a management company could either be approved, conditionally approved, put on probationary status, or denied or revoked. So based upon the review of submission documents that you guys submit to us, we're going to start publishing a list of management companies and their corresponding approval. So I strongly encourage everyone when the policy is finalized and published, please make sure that appropriate staff that's responsible for submitting documents to us understands this policy. And of course, if you have questions, 
you can always reach out to us. We also modified our e-signature policy by adding a um, compliance monitoring requirement. For those that may not be aware, our initial policy was actually published um, as a response to COVID-19 in the beginning, and it was published as a housing finance division policy. So if you followed our COVID-19 Q&A postings, you've already seen the policy. Just now we are adding a compliance monitoring policy verbiage to that policy. So please make sure you go back. It's on our website. If you have any questions, please contact us. So we do know that um, the IRS notice 2020-53 is set to expire 12-31, December 31st, which is right around the corner. Um, we are closely monitoring to see if the waiver will be extended. Um, will DCA resume inspections if the waiver is not extended? Our position will continue to put safety first for our partners, our residents, and especially our seniors. Yes, we do have inspection protocol in place that addresses PPE and what units will and will not be inspected, but we're not gonna release that information until we are confident that the environment is safe to resume inspections. So to reiterate, we have not announced when and if, and if the physical inspection process will resume. And honestly, it's just way too soon for us to make that announcement yet. So what can you expect after December 31st? I've told you about the physical inspections. We're waiting until it's safe to make an announcement. But for your desk file review, okay, here's the thing. When we suspended the inspection process as a response to COVID, the suspension applied to both physical and file. If in the scenario the IRS does not extend the waiver, we are strongly encouraging our partners to prepare and be on notice should we contact you to conduct a file inspection? What does that mean? It means if you don't have your files in order, which you already should, you should start now because you could receive a notice in 2021 requesting desk files for review. Again, we have not released a final policy. We just wanted you guys to know that we are working on different scenarios and when we feel the environment is safe to resume business as usual. Of course, we will announce it in the blast. I wanted to talk a little bit about uncorrected accessibility items. Um, as your HFA, we're responsible for internal reporting and there's some reports that we complete at the end of the year and we've kind of noticed a pattern where some of the audits are in an open audit status due to accessibility items. We wanted to make sure that our partners know that we do have an accessibility cure, an, um, an accessibility cure response policy. So if you're disputing an accessibility item, make sure you look at that policy and make sure that you submit the supporting documentation from an industry standard professional stating why you dispute it and that could be the reason why the case is open. And if you take this measure, you're, you know, if you submit it, we could possibly close your audit. So please make sure that you are familiar with our accessibility cure response policy. And it's also listed on our website. So the biweekly compliance blast. I do apologize if you guys are so upset. <laughs> that you did not receive it yesterday because I know that you look so forward to it, but it's actually gonna go out um, after this meeting today. We were waiting on to finalize some policy. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a regional manager reached out to me and asked me if I could provide her like an Excel sheet of staff that is subscribed because she wanted to make sure that her staff was getting it and are they opening it because they were telling her I think they communicated that they weren't able to get it. And so I was able to give her a list of everyone who subscribed. I was also able to tell her that they're getting it, they're just not opening it. So if there's any managers 
out there that would like for me to do the same for them. As long as you can provide a domain name, I can give you a list of the staff that subscribe to our email blast. Um, because like I said, this is our main vehicle of communication. So you can email me or just email the compliance blast. I'm sorry, the compliance inbox and just ask for an Excel sheet of who subscribed to the newsletter. And this is an opportunity too for you to update your contacts because we did find that a lot of the people that was of the email address was no longer employed by the agency. So it's a good way that you can scrub and it allows us to scrub our contact list as well. A few compliance reminders, please continue to use your property information forms to not only update your contacts, but also property name changes. So if you, if your property underwent a name change, that is um, an important um, change that we need to know so that we can update our system. All communication should be sent to the pod email inbox. Make sure that you include your Georgia ID and property name so that we can make sure that any questions or concerns are um, responded to by the appropriate team. Please remember that your 8609s are due by the by email the same day they are sent to the IRS. We've been receiving um, an uptick of consultants asking for information and we know that some properties, especially those, some management companies, sorry, especially those with little to no experience are having to consult with an outside consultant. We're just asking that we be notified of who your consultant is, just so that we can kind of be sure that we are releasing information to the correct person. And don't forget about your welcome to OPM packages. Taryn Gibbs is our senior portfolio analyst. If you have any questions, um, or if you have not received one and you know that, or you think that you should have received one, you can reach out to her and she can kind of research and see what's going on with your package. And this is just to reiterate, these are the new properties. Properties that are in our portfolio, you will not receive the welcome to OPM package. All right, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about asset management. One of the things that we wanted to really mention during this meeting is to be mindful of your PCC request and um, the type of change reported when it should result in a PCC request. These are just a list of examples. Of course, this list is not exhaustive, but we wanted to make sure that you guys know when a change is reported, when you should submit a PCC request. And fortunately, all of these examples you see here they denote a PCC request. Again, we have a full policy on that on our website. In 2021, there's a big change with asset management. Um, it is now going to be required on um, financial reporting requirements. Um, hopefully you guys have seen this because we've kind of been leading up to it in our previous blast, just making announcements that it's coming. So 2021, this policy will commence. This chart is a really good chart because it kind of gives a really basic um, guidance as to who, what, when, why, and um, how you submit, and also when you'll be no longer required to report your financial reportings. But the full policy has been published and it is on the OPM website. And if you have any questions, um, please send your email to the email listed here. Make sure that the staff um, responsible for reporting financials are familiar and know where this policy is. And there's also deadlines next year of when you're going to be required to submit. Last, please don't forget about the pod email inbox. And if your memory has been kind of shaken like mine has this past year, you may have forgotten who your um, pod, you know, your pod assignment. Please email compliance at dca.ga.gov and someone will be able to let you know your pod assignment.
again, please email all questions to the compliance inbox or you can add them in the chat. Thank you for allowing us to chat with you this morning and just to kind of keep things on your radar, what's coming, what's to come. And again, we will publish a um, response for your Q&A after December 9th. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day and talk soon.